All right, what's going on you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Pokemon. I wanted to add a little bit more context to yesterday's video about MetaZoo. Did they make a huge mistake? So to catch you guys up to speed, if you didn't see yesterday's video, uh, MetaZoo, or I guess Mike specifically, made the decision to shut down the Discord for NFT discussion. So MetaZoo had a separate Discord for the NFT holders to discuss, I guess, just future projects and, and benefits and redeemable options and whatever they wanted NFT related that was shut down yesterday. And the reason that Mike gave was there was too much negativity in that chat or in that discussion. Again, I don't really have a horse in this race because I don't have a discord account and I don't have an NFT anymore. Um, so I'm not really uh, leaning one way or the other on this aside from just objectively what I think about it. So Mike shut it down because of the negativity in that chat. Now, a lot of people are unhappy about this. On the Facebook pages, everybody is complaining because obviously a big issue with MetaZoo prior to this was the regular, just the MetaZoo Discord in general. There was an issue that a lot of people, I feel like, felt kind of disenfranchised because they were banned from that original MetaZoo Discord. Um, but recently, this year, MetaZoo unbanned everybody that was banned prior from the Discord and I believe also from the Facebook pages because I see um, our guy, Alan, always commenting on the Facebook pages, but, um, so they, they, they took this really big step because I feel like they were getting a lot of backlash and a lot of criticism because people felt like MetaZoo doesn't want to hear anything we have to say that's not positive. And if you say anything even remotely negative, if you ask about a shipping deadline, if you ask about a product you haven't received, if you ask about why did this get delayed, where is this product? What's the issue? Any of that, a lot of people are getting banned just for really pretty innocent questions. So I think MetaZoo took a really good positive step by acknowledging that and unbanning everybody they had banned prior. In, in doing so, they acknowledged that, hey, maybe we shouldn't have banned all of you. Maybe we're not taking the right approach to this. Maybe we should have kind of an open discourse in a place where you can discuss what you think about MetaZoo, whether it's positive or negative. Now, this recent step, shutting down the MetaZoo NFT Discord, I think is a major step backwards, and I said that in my last video. And I want to point out, by the way, Argos has his own Discord, Argos Anonymous, um, and it's called the MetaZoo Oasis. And he just opened up an NFT section of that Discord. So if you guys want to talk about the NFT stuff, you can go to the uh, MetaZoo Oasis on Argos' Discord and discuss NFTs on that subsection there. Um, but to further clarify, um, in the last video, I wasn't super sure on what was promised as far as the Genesis NFT redeemable card. So that was the main thing that I think was the catalyst for the NFT Discord getting shut down. But I think a lot of people were complaining about these Genesis NFT cards. So if you guys are not aware, the Genesis NFTs were the first NFTs released for MetaZoo. And with that, they were promised these, uh, these NFT cards. So you could redeem your NFT for a corresponding card that had the same beastie or number or whatever you had on your NFT in a physical MetaZoo playing card. Now, these were promised, I believe, still to be the case after people purchased these. So again, I want to clarify that when people bought these NFTs, I don't think anybody bought them under the assumption that we were going to get a card associated with the NFT. It was something that was announced after. Now, um, further information shows that as recently as December of 2022, they had pictures of all of the printed produced promo cards for those Genesis NFTs saying that they were shipping soon. You guys can see that screenshot here on the video. So there was an actual, you can, they didn't give, I really don't think that you can say they gave an official date for the release or the shipping of those cards, but just to give you guys kind of a timeline here. That was in December of 2022. So December of last year, they showed every NFT printed in its card form and saying that they were coming soon. Now, fast forward a couple of months, February of this year, February 2023, they said they were shipping at the end of that week, February 2023. So that, I think, is the closest thing that you can come to saying that they promised a date. So there were a lot of people, from what I understand, complaining, well, not really even complaining, I would say asking, when are we going to get these redeemable cards? When is this going to become an option? And it's kind of had a whole back and forth on Discord to eventually Mike announcing that they were coming on July 1st of this year. So less than a week away now. Um, so that was kind of the catalyst of this. I think that's what a lot of the negativity was coming from was these Genesis NFT holders, which again, 
there I, I believe there's 500 just slightly over 500 total Genesis NFTs so we're not talking about a massive group of people that are probably holding these NFTs but 500 I think in the scape of MetaZoo is still pretty significant um but yeah, so that that I think is where this all came from. That's kind of the timeline. So February, they were kind of promised to ship at the end of that week. And now here we are, and the new date is July 1st. And that doesn't even specify the shipping time. That specifies that you will be able to redeem your NFT for the uh, physical card. It doesn't mean it's going to ship at the end of this week or at the end of that week in February. Oh, wait, I'm getting mixed up here. So the July 1st date. That says that's when you can redeem your NFT. So even though you redeem it July 1st, you're still not guaranteed that it's going to ship within that week. So that's kind of the the direction that that's going. So I think this kind of further reaffirms my point that I really don't think that the criticism that MetaZoo gets, by and large, is from people that hate MetaZoo. I really do think it's the people spending the most money on MetaZoo. And I think this is important. If anybody from MetaZoo is watching, I really do think that this is an important point because like I said, I've got another YouTube channel. It's got over a million subscribers. Trust me. I know it sucks to get negativity online. It sucks to get negative comments. It sucks to be, to see people complain about your product, whether that product is trading cards or whether that product is content. It's not fun to see, but I don't think the answer is to say you cannot have this opinion. We're going to shut down this Avenue where you can voice your opinion. I do not think that's the answer. And I really do feel that the people that are complaining the most about MetaZoo and that the source of all this negativity um, or this perceived negativity in the NFT Discord is not haters of MetaZoo. It's people that spent a lot of money on a product and they saw something that was promised in association with the product that they bought and they want that product. These are people that are fans. These are not haters of MetaZoo. I really truly believe that most of the people that are the most upset that are the loudest voices that are complaining the most are the people that like the brand the most. They bought the most stuff. These NFTs were expensive and these people want their redeemable rewards. And I think that's totally fair. And again, I think a lot of people took issue with Mike saying, again, you're waiting on a free product. That was kind of the response, which a lot of people perceive to be snarky or dismissive. And I think a lot of people perceive that correctly. I do think in retrospect that that was kind of a snarky response because these people, even though it's a free product, it's kind of an additional thing associated with the NFTs that wasn't originally promised. I think people just want their MetaZoo stuff. And I think when MetaZoo starts to realize that and realize these people aren't complaining because they hate the brand, they're complaining because they spent a lot of money. And, and I think the issue with MetaZoo often becomes over-promise, under-deliver. And I don't want to sound like a broken record here because I've kind of voiced my concerns um, with like the customer service, obviously the shipping times, They'll promise a shipping date. I think Bear Walker for me was a big recent example of that. Um, they promised it, I believe, by the end of March to ship. And it was a couple months late. And Bear Walker was one of the most expensive drops they've ever done on a per card basis. It was $250 for one redeemable card and one redeemable or one non-redeemable card. Justifiably, those people are going to be upset if that product doesn't ship on time, and that's been the case with multiple releases across the board. If anything, you could argue that MetaZoo is consistently inconsistent when it comes to actually meeting their shipping time. So that, I think, is the biggest issue with MetaZoo, is A, this kind of attitude toward, towards what they perceive as negativity. I really strongly feel like these people that are that are voicing their concerns are people spending money on the product that, because they like it and they want the product. And I think that really needs to be hammered home that I really think the people that are still actively voicing hate for MetaZoo that really just hate the product and aren't buying anything is the vast minority. I think the people that are the most upset are the people that like it the most, spending the most money and just want these rewards. So I think to say, again, you're waiting on a free product is pretty dismissive towards those people that spent maybe in some cases thousands of dollars on these NFTs and want to get the maximized utility out of those NFTs. So I think that's important. And again, I really don't feel like I stand much to lose here. I, I do feel like I lost my, uh, my MetaZoo privileges as far as they would send me like free product every time there's a new drop um, to open here on the channel. And it's been a while since I've gotten a package from MetaZoo. So maybe I did irritate them in that way. But as far as Discord, I'm not on it. I'm not worried about getting banned. And as far as product, 
I buy a lot of their product regardless. I like to open it. I'm going to open it regardless, and I think they know that. Um, so I'm not too worried about getting some kind of punishment here because I'm still going to – I mean, I like going to the Mothman Festival. I'm planning on going this year and going to the MetaZoo booth. I, I still like the product. I'm still buying the product. But I don't really have, like, a fear of repercussions. I really feel like someone – needs to voice these concerns because a lot of people with YouTube channels right now, without naming any names, big names in the MetaZoo community, they are also MetaZoo partners or MetaZoo distributors, and they have a stake in this. They have an investment in MetaZoo, so they really can't voice these same these same concerns. And I feel like I really saw that with Native because a lot of these these partners or these distributors they took pre-orders for native based on what they were told they were going to get. And they had to fill a lot of those orders late and they had a lot of upset customers. And that, that backlash didn't always come directly on MetaZoo. It came on those partners that sold those pre-orders and people didn't get their product on time and people became mad at the partners. And I kind of watched that play out and the partners didn't say anything in their videos. They weren't complaining about the fact they're just kind of emphasizing MetaZoo's got this second wave or MetaZoo's running late. They're, they're having whatever technical logistical issues, but they didn't really express how, how upset I think they actually were that these continued missed deadlines for a core set release like native really impacted their business and reputation. I think a lot of these guys were really reputable and there were people that I ordered from that I think were very reputable MetaZoo partners or, or resellers or whatever and I pre-ordered native from them and it came over a month late. And I think that wasn't their fault. It was MetaZoo's fault, but they're starting to get the backlash and their reputation starting to take a hit, but they feel like they can't voice their concerns because they need to get, they need to still have that access to the product because it's a big part of their business. So I feel like I kind of have a responsibility to voice some of these concerns that I know these other people are feeling, but they feel like they can't say it. And I hope you guys appreciate that I'm doing that because maybe I am, I, I don't know. Maybe I am getting punished for it. Maybe I'm not. If I am, maybe I'm just not super aware of it, but I, I do want to say I will probably always be a fan of MetaZoo. This has been a hobby that has really meant a lot to me. I've been able to enjoy it with my friends. We go to events together. We talk about the cards we bought on eBay that day. It's been a really fun thing for me. I really enjoy the overall, the overarching theme, the idea. And again, I think we got to give credit to Mike Waddell. As many people seem to not like Mike Waddell, we kind of, we got to remember that this whole universe came from his idea. This was his baby. He invented this thing that we all like so much. And you're watching this video right now because you either currently enjoy MetaZoo or at one point did, and, are, and now you feel disenfranchised. And I really feel like... I, I, I kind of have a responsibility to, to voice these concerns because I'm somebody that spends a lot of money on MetaZoo. I'm probably like a lot of the partners. I'm probably like a lot of you guys watching right now that just enjoy it as a hobbyist. And I spend a lot of money on it. And a lot of you guys feel like you're not getting the response that you want. And I hope that somebody watching this from MetaZoo, and I made a video like this a couple months ago, but I hope that somebody watching this from MetaZoo really just internalizes that I feel like the people leaving these negative comments, while it might seem annoying to you because this is your baby. I mean, this is your brand. You don't want to see negative things said about it. This is something that you put a lot of time, effort, and passion into. And it probably hurts to see people constantly complaining and, and constantly saying negative things. But I, I really do feel like a lot of these people are people that are fans of your product. They spent a lot of money on it. And they are justifiably upset about some of these over-promise, under-deliver scenarios. And I really think that's the majority of what it is. Yes, there is some legitimate hate towards MetaZoo from people that probably don't buy any MetaZoo and only come in to participate in the Discord or on a Facebook page just to leave a negative comment because they don't like it. But I really think that is the vast minority. And I just really hope that MetaZoo sees this video and they say, wow, I mean, there's a lot of people that care so much and like our brand so much that they are upset enough when they don't receive the product that they ordered that they 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 feel the need to go and find a place to vent. They're going online because they want your product so bad that they feel like they have to vent on Discord or vent on Facebook. And that's not a bad thing. People like this product and that's why they're complaining. And I think people need to acknowledge that. And I think really 
like I said in the last video, I think they just want to be acknowledged. They want MetaZoo to come out with a statement or at least respond in a way that doesn't make them feel dismissed or a snarky response. And they just want to feel heard. And they want to say, you know, I, they want to hear, you know, we know you spent all this money. We're sorry that we didn't meet your expectations. Your product is coming soon. Or just give them a hard, real expectation of when they can receive their product and not say, hey, this is a free product. Stop, stop complaining. We know, we know it's late. Just get over it. They don't want to hear that. And they don't, they certainly don't want to see their outlet to be able to vent about things that they bought, get shut down right after you just kind of did a reverse Uno card with the, uh, the unbanning on discord. They want to be acknowledged. And I think that's the important part of this is that we enjoy this game and, and pretty much I would say more often than not, the collaborations or the drops that I have personally purchased and spent a lot of money on, I would say the vast majority of those have been late. They have missed their deadline and they were significantly late, like months, not just a couple days, not a couple weeks, months late. And I'm sure that my experience is reflected by a lot of you guys and that's why you're upset. I got messages from people after that last video and Mike, if you're watching this, anybody from Meadows, if you're watching this, I got messages from people after that last video, names that we all know in the MetaZoo space saying, thank you for making that video. I could not make that because it would reflect badly on me and maybe I would get punished or blacklisted or whatever. I got at least half a dozen messages like that from names that we all know. And I feel like this is an important topic and I feel like MetaZoo just needs to acknowledge they have been over-promising, and they have been under-delivering. They have been late on a lot of stuff. And while it might be frustrating, like I said, to get this kind of backlash and negativity, these are the people that are going to continue to support your brand long-term. And if you really do turn off these people, and you really do dismiss these people, and you say, I'm going to mute your outlet to talk about the product that you like, these people will leave eventually. But these are the people that if you treated this situation correctly... These are the people that would stay for a decade. These are the people that would stay in this hobby for the long run. And I think this is a very pivotal moment for MetaZoo because I really feel like if, if this continues and these people continue to be dismissed, this is like the kickoff point for MetaZoo. This is like a make or break type of era where the people that stay are either going to stay or they're going to leave. And I think if they leave this early on, it could really damage the long-term staying power of MetaZoo. I really think that. And I think now we're getting to a time where there really needs to be a change, where MetaZoo needs to acknowledge these people. It's not mute them. It's not dismiss them. It's not respond to them sarcastically. And again, I, I don't have any problem with Mike Waddell. I've never had a negative experience with Mike Waddell. And some of these people that have had these experiences, I cannot say that I have. So I don't feel biased in that way towards Mike. I actually really appreciate the product that he gave us and this idea I think is a fucking phenomenal idea. This whole idea of cryptids being kind of loosely rooted in reality and the physical locations geographically of these cryptids having like their own little local fan base. It's a genius idea. And I think Mike did something really cool by creating this brand. So I don't want to be one of these guys on here saying Mike needs to step down. Mike needs to give over creative control. Mike needs to be restrained. I, I really think we need to show some appreciation for what Mike has given us, but I really do think there needs to be a change in MetaZoo in order for this thing to stay because you could go back and watch my video. Maybe it was like five months ago where I listed all my complaints with MetaZoo at the time that included, you know, the second Kickstarter, which everybody knows was kind of a fiasco, the Mothman festival promo card, which they advertised would be available at the festival. And it was not available. They didn't have it ready yet. And they said, email us and we'll get it to you in the mail. And it took me 10 emails to get mine. My girlfriend didn't get hers for months after. Well, my ex-girlfriend now. Um, but yeah, it, there's been there's been a lot of things that have really been, really felt dismissive towards the people that are, they're enthusiastic. Like, I'm enthusiastic to give you my money. These people are enthusiastic to give you their money. And you're saying, no. Don't feel passionate about my product. And if you do feel so passionate because you didn't get something that you wanted, I'm going to mute you. I'm going to silence you. I'm going to ban you. It's just not the way. And I just hope that they see this and they acknowledge that. And I hope that you guys 
um, appreciate me voicing that. So that's going to wrap it up for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Nick Strength and Pokemon. Maybe now Nick Strength and MetaZoo. Signing out.